What is the most important development in weather forecasting history? Supercomputers? Yeah, perhaps. Cloud identification? Possibly. The weather vane? Maybe. Maybe not. But I think you could make a strong case for these things. Weather satellites. In this video, I'm going to guide you through the fascinating history of weather satellites, starting back in the 1960s and 70s, and the first ones that were put into space, all the way up to the modern day beasts. We're going to be talking about how these machines have revolutionized weather forecasting and climate monitoring. Long before satellites, people relied on ground-based observations to predict the weather. From the ancient Greeks studying wind patterns to the 19th century meteorologists using barometers and telegraphs. The quest to understand our atmosphere has always been a crucial part of human history. And as technology advanced, so did our ambitions. The space race of the 20th century opened new horizons for meteorology, and the idea of observing weather from space became a reality. The journey truly began on the 1st of April 1960, when NASA launched the Television Infrared Observation Satellite. Tyros-1 was the world's first dedicated weather satellite, equipped with television cameras. It captured images of cloud cover from space, providing meteorologists with unprecedented data. Though its mission lasted just 78 days, Tyros-1 proved that satellites could effectively observe Earth's atmosphere. This single satellite genuinely changed weather forecasting forever. Following Tyros-1, a series of improved satellites were launched throughout the 1960s and 1970s. Tyros-2 through to Tyros-10 refined the technology, and the Environmental Science Services Administration, ESA, and Nimbus satellites then brought new capabilities, such as infrared imaging and more frequent observations. Now, being able to see clouds from space in infrared means effectively observing the temperature of the cloud tops. The brighter the cloud, the colder it is in infrared. Therefore, the higher up in the sky or further away from the Earth's surface they are. Infrared, or IR, imagery provides a view of the weather situation during the hours of darkness. Whereas before IR pictures, Scientists were relying on visible imagery, like seeing the clouds as an observer in space would. So only really helpful when you have the sun offering some light. The early satellites allowed forecasters to track storms, monitor cloud movements, and even observe a hurricane from space for the very first time. Really hard to imagine just what a difference this made not just to day-to-day -day weather forecasting, but the whole science of meteorology. Satellites allow us to view the whole of the globe, otherwise inaccessible areas such as the vast expanse of the oceans or deep into the Amazon jungle. In the 1970s, Europe began to put eyes into space too, when the Meteosat series began. Seven satellites were launched between 1977 and 1997 as part of the Meteosat Series 1. Since then, Series 2 and 3 have followed this century, with recent launches in the mid-2020s of game-changing new sensors on board for detecting lightning, seeing temperature profiles of the atmosphere in 3D, and incredibly detailed imagery of tiny health-damaging particulates in the air. But how exactly do weather satellites work? Well, let's take a closer look. Weather satellites are equipped with specialist sensors and cameras that observe the Earth's atmosphere from above. 
These satellites use a variety of instruments. These sensors include radiometers to measure visible and infrared light, spectrometers to analyze atmospheric composition, and microwave sensors to detect moisture and temperature at different levels. They capture images of clouds, track storms, measure wind speeds, and even monitor sea surface temperature. Some can detect lightning flashes, volcanic ash, and even smoke from wildfires. The data collected is transmitted back to ground stations around the world. And here, supercomputers process this information, which is then used by meteorologists to create forecasts and issue warnings. In essence, weather satellites serve as our eyes in the skies, giving us critical real-time data about our ever-changing planet. The satellites themselves come in two types, really. Polar orbiting, which travel over the poles and scan the entire planet as the Earth rotates underneath them. And then geostationary ones, which stay fixed over the same point to provide continuous coverage. Early weather satellites, such as Tyros-1, were polar orbiters. These travel over the poles, scanning the entire planet as the Earth rotates beneath them. Polar orbiters deliver detailed data of temperature, humidity and atmospheric composition, vital for long-term climate studies. But because they are moving across the sky, they're not always that useful for watching weather systems developing. But one advantage of a polar orbiter compared to a geostationary is that their orbit is closer to the Earth, and so they have a better view, if you like. They can take higher resolution images. A major breakthrough in satellite technology came with the launch of the first geostationary weather satellite, SMS-1, back in 1974. Geostationary satellites orbit the Earth at the same rate that it spins, which means they can continuously observe the same region. And this gave meteorologists real-time views of developing weather systems. The US GOES, which stands for Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite Program, and Europe's Meteosat satellites became instrumental in providing live data for weather prediction, disaster response, and climate monitoring. A mix of observations from both polar orbiters and geostationary satellite provides depth, clarity, and crucially, continuity for meteorologists. Now, here at the Met Office, we have our own little bits of uh, satellite history right behind me and uh, joining me to talk about uh, this particular instrument is Nigel Atkinson. Nigel, uh, thank you for joining uh, me. What are we looking at here first and foremost? So this is an instrument called the Advanced Microwave Sounding Unit B. This didn't actually go into space, but this, but one, this is a prototype. That's right? right. This is the engineering model. So we were testing these during the 1990s and the first one was flown in 1998. So these are satellites, yeah. NOAA satellites, uh, being yes. launched in the late 90s. And, and what, what is this measuring? So they're measuring um, microwave emission by the atmosphere. So this one is particularly observing water vapour emission. And you were working on this in the 90s in Farnborough, not, so not here in Exeter. That's right. HQ. We had a special team assembled to make use of the vacuum chamber facilities at Farnborough. We would subject it to several weeks, um, typically, of testing to make sure it could withstand the rigours of space. It's got to get up there, right? So it's got to survive That's the right. rigours of a launch. So it would be launched on a NASA rocket. Um, it would be protected during the launch by uh, a fairing. Right. Um, but, but when it got to the right orbit, then the fairing would drop away and this would be exposed to cold space. That's why it's got those thermal blankets. These ones, they're not still operational yeah. now? No, they're not. They, they lasted a lot longer than their design lifetime. Oh, really? Um, about 10 years, designed for five years. Okay. Um, Would that be fairly typical for a satellite lifetime? Would something, a, I think a bit of equipment like this be expected to last for five years? Nowadays, it would be ex expected to last for a lot longer than five really? years. But back in the 1990s, five years was good. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Mm. So it's fascinating to have this bit here and, and, yep. and a bit of history from yourself, yep. Nigel. So yeah. thank you very much. Okay, thank you. 
Today's weather satellites are true marvels of engineering. They carry advanced sensors monitoring all aspects of the weather from clouds to lightning. They can watch the biggest typhoon generating life-threatening winds to the smallest dust and smoke particles being blown about by gentle low-level breezes. Satellites allow us to track pollutants as well as observe climate damaging gases. The latest generations provide crystal clear images and crucially rapid updates providing vital support for meteorologists, climatologists and the emergency services. International collaboration is key with agencies like NASA, NOAA, ESA, JAXA and UMETSAT all working together to share data to improve global forecasts. The information provided by weather satellites affects all of us, from accurate daily forecasts and severe weather warnings to aiding in agricultural planning and disaster relief. Satellite data is the largest contributor to numerical weather prediction accuracy. It's really no exaggeration to say that these satellites save lives, protect property, and of course we gain deeper insights into our changing climate. As technology continues to evolve, weather satellites will remain at the forefront of our efforts to understand and protect our planet. Further launches will be maybe smaller and more agile with ever improving sensors. Plus, of course, development in AI will no doubt improve our ability to analyze the data we receive from our eyes in the skies. From the relatively humble beginnings of the Tyros-1 over 60 years ago to the more sophisticated systems orbiting around our heads today. The history of weather satellites is a story of innovation, collaboration and discovery. Next time you check the weather, spare a thought for the satellites silently watching over us from above. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey through the history of weather satellites. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe for more fascinating stories about science and technology.